This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. It's always good to see Adam Smith. And yeah, there's some fights going on behind us. Chris Congo's uh, yeah, boxing quite uh, nicely as we speak. Um, but other than that, how's things, mate? Always good to see you. Chris Congo always boxes nicely, doesn't he? He's got a, a lovely style. Um, Barry there in the corner, part of the Ben Davison team, of course. And uh, Ben's got his... Uh, his big job on Saturday night with AJ and it uh, looks a pretty good partnership, doesn't it, already? I love the Don Charles, Daniel Dubois relationship too. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it, enjoying fight week. Um, Riyadh season, bringing it to London, uh, running us around all the tourist sites. Been down by the river, haven't we? We're uh, Leicester Square last night, Wembley tonight, down in the city, I think, tomorrow at Guildhall. I'm going to talk sport for lunchtime with Simon Jordan and Jim White, then it's Trafalgar Square, then it's back here, we've got Boxfest. I mean, by Sunday morning I'm going to be absolutely shattered and I'm sure you will be as well. But we'll probably be talking to each other at about 1, 2 o'clock on Sunday a.m. Sunday and then I'll be writing a piece for Boxing News. So it's, it's all a bit mad. Um, that's my schedule. I'm sure yours will be even even more busy. I think I've just seen Moses and Tama. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah, and Everyone's around. Jack Catchwell's over there. It's uh, Nassim Hamid here, obviously, to see his son. It's uh, it's great to see the uh, the good and great of boxing. Uh, a lot of legends coming into town uh, on uh, on Saturday night. Um, so, yeah, it should be a, a, a magical occasion at Wembley like it always is. But um, 96,000 and they can squeeze you and I in, I think, as well, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I hope that. I hope that. But, um, yeah, you know, let's get into it. Um, Anthony Joshua will take it on Daniel Dovar. There's been a long, long build-up um, since so much go back and forth between the pair. Um, have you sort of, as the, the fight week's gone on, have you flip-flopped between uh, towards anyone or sort of has anyone impressed you, I guess, or either of Asia, the way they've handled certain sort of parts in the build-up, i say? It was a very, very long build-up, wasn't it? If you go back to Sheffield and the days when they sparred, and I was at one of them, and, and Anthony and I had a little laugh uh, on Monday night um, about one of the sessions because uh, he, he fell over in the corner. And I think people are, have read into it that he got knocked down and he was like, you were there, you saw me slip, didn't you? And we had a bit of a joke. No, it doesn't really matter what happened there, but what is important is that they knew each other then and it's a, it's a long-standing rivalry. And I think they always were going to fight. Um, yeah, a little bit of back and forth when they, when they met, when it was first announced and uh, uh, some drama, mini drama. But I think they both look really relaxed this week. Um, I think Daniel looks lean and, and, and ready and he's handling it well, I, I believe. And AJ looks super relaxed and cool and I love the fact he's engaging with the fans. Um, he's, not, he's never lost that. You know, people say, oh, AJ, he's not got time for people and he's a superstar now. No, he's not. He's exactly the same person as I met 15 years ago, I can't remember when, who I had around my house eight years ago chatting to my kids as I saw on Monday night. I, I, I don't believe he's changed and uh, I think he's a great guy. I think he's fantastic for boxing. He really loves the fans. He doesn't forget where he was. Um, great to see the Finchie boxing guys in the ring with him tonight uh, at the workouts. Um, so yeah, I think both of them look really good. Um, haven't seen much of Don Charles yet this week, but I've seen Ben Davison. I like the coaches, I like the backstory here, because both fighters seem to be in a, in a fresh place with their back engine team. And I think it might be crucial that on the night, um, if it goes rounds, what are the corners gonna do? How's Ben gonna play it? If things aren't going his way, if he has to go to plan B, C, it's all great that they're executing the game plan right. They did it brilliantly for Wallen, brilliantly again for, for Nganu. What if Dubois getting success in there and they've got to change things? What happens with Don Charles in the corner if it's not working for Dubois or he, he, you know, he goes down early or something? Um, it's going to be fascinating to watch. I think it's a, there's a lot of power in that ring, Lewis, on Saturday night. You've got to fancy Anthony with the resume, with the experience, with the um, maybe the extra quality, but Daniel's got real momentum. He's a young lion, he's 27, he's in the form of his life, and um, I don't think he's going to get phased. I might be wrong, but I don't think he's going to freeze. I think he's going to really go for this. You mentioned there about with Anthony Joshua, and I guess you could say it about Dubois as well on the Don Charles, like, 
what are they going to do if it goes wrong or if there's sort of a, a bit of adversity? Do you think that they still, when, when people sort of allude to Anthony Joshua turning the corner, as say, and, and when they allude to sort of him being sort of this new lease of life under Ben Davidson, is there still something to pro prove because we haven't seen that adversity yet? It's a good question because he hasn't had that under Ben, but he has had that, of course, yeah, with Dillian White back in that fantastic fight at the O2. He obviously had it with Andy Ruiz and uh, he kept getting up. It wasn't his night. Um, he's had it in, in a different way with Alexander Rusik and the, the two defeats. Um, and of course, the big one really for me where he ticked all the boxes was the Vladimir Klitschko victory, which still is for me his best night. Um, it was an epic fight. Um, it was when he had to prove himself. He had to get up off a heavy knockdown he was probably, let's be honest, a punch or two away from losing that and his whole career could have changed. But he bit down on the gum shield, he got a second win and he proved that he can battle it out and tough it out. And uh, So you can't question AJ in adversity um, through his career, but obviously he hasn't had that under Ben, so it may be a, a, a different thing for the corner to work out. Um, with Daniel, people question the, the Joe Joyce defeat. He had an eye smashed up, you know, that's hard to question. And then against Alexander Rusik again, the way he lost that, but he, he almost won it. So psychologically, maybe he sort of thought he won the fight and then he didn't feel that confident. I don't know. What I do know is that with his dad at ringside, the Jarrell Miller fight was a, was, a, was a big test for him. A tough, tough guy and he came through it. A bigger test against Filip Hergovic. He took his lumps and bumps in the first couple of rounds. I don't think he could be that defensively naive against Joshua, or he may pay the price. And I'm not sure he will be, because I think Don will have worked very, very hard on that. But I think Daniel still, he's got the momentum. He's, he's, he's battled through against Hergovic. Who knows? If he, if he takes the first three or four rounds that Joshua has to, to dish out, What's Dubois going to do if he's still there and he's landing those left hooks to the body and he takes the fight to Joshua? It's going to be very, very interesting. AJ's a big favourite going to this fight, but right Dubois off at your peril. Yes, AJ could win dramatically early, but if Dubois hanging around, Shane McGregor believes he's got a hell of a I was going to say that, I was going to bring that because Shane McGregor chance, mentioned it. You know, and, and Shane knows him better than a lot. He's worked with him very close and he, he quietly fancies him. And he thinks psychologically he'll hold himself together. So uh, this could be this could be fascinating fight night. I, but I, I don't know. I believe AJ's in, in, in great form, and I, I just wouldn't want to really be in with AJ at the moment. I think that's the problem for Daniel. I think Joshua looks so sharp and so focused. It would be an upset if Dubois wins, but don't don't write him off. This guy is a tough fighter, and he's he's proved a lot in the last year. And he's with Don Charles, and they're going for this. One thing I actually did want to mention, uh, just before I do sort of let you go, um, we see all the pro you know, yourself, you've, you've worked with all, with all different promoters, and this is a new thing to see Hearn, Warren, and Shalom. I saw an interview of IFL yesterday, the red carpet, Hearn and Shalom going at it. Um, and I think that won't be the only time we see this all week. I think people are going to want to get, because obviously Ben was sort of on the outside for a little bit, he's in now. Like, what do you make of that whole dynamic, I guess, of? Of sort of all the sort of the, the getting him in interviews, all the sort of the and all the back and forth, I guess, still um, on a friendly way, but it's still there. It's fascinating, isn't it, um, to see the uh, the promoters working under the same umbrella. As uh, Adam Hamed comes into the room, we got Naz here. It's fantastic and wonderful for the uh, for the fans to get this free night. Um, just three nights out from the big one, um, but yeah, it's um, sorry, it just takes me back. Lewis, it takes me back to to the days of Naz. It's really bizarre. I chatted with Adam earlier, and, and you know, I, I remember when you know, he was he was on Naz's knee. I mean, it's bizarre. The whole thing's crazy. I've been in this business too long, uh, but yeah, seeing the promoters together, I uh, had a good chat with Ben uh, on the red carpet last night. And, um, you know, he's got himself in there. And October the 12th, the undercard is largely a boxer card. So he's done well. Eddie and Frank, we know, are there. And um, you know, they're getting more attention this week. But Ben's trying to get in there. It's lovely watching them all work. Calais and Nissa as well. 
and Izzy is trying to get in too. Yeah. And we've got the big show in Sheffield next week for us. It's, a, it's our biggest show yet at GBM, so of course it's not like this, and we've all got to enjoy this one. But for us, it's a big night next Friday night on the 27th with the likes of Shaq Thompson and Ticey Gallagher and Tori Ellis Willits and Reese Mould and Ryan Walsh, Huey Fury, Maxi Hughes. It's a great night for us. Um, so I know Izzy wants to be in and amongst it on the red carpet within the next year, but for now, it's Eddie, it's Frank, enter Ben to the party. It's great to see, and uh, let's see how the dynamics unfold over the next few months, because they're all working with Turkey for the good of boxing, for the good of the shows, but there's some egos, there's some, um, there's some big promotional outfits that want to take center stage. There's Sky in his own, TNT, there's broadcasters, everyone's sort of coming together, but uh, yeah, it's, it'd be really intriguing to see how it all pans out. But at the moment, everybody's the best of friends. Yeah, you, you could say that. You could say that. Yeah, Adam, I'm going to let you go. We've been here for a while, but I appreciate taking time to me. Always good to see you, mate. And yeah, sure won't be the last time we catch up this week. So I do appreciate it. Uh, mini Hamed. It's a, it's a very surreal moment for me. Yeah, I'll let you go on, mate. Top man. Thank you.